A lot of you guys suggested that I should build the man from the fog next, so in this episode, we're going to be doing exactly that, as well as building him a nice spooky environment, so let's get right into it. As always, I started off with a base plate, and I started laying down some plates on top of it for some detail. Unfortunately, I was unable to make this mock block accurate because I have like zero tiles. I decided to go with this brown dry looking landscape. The idea is that the night dweller or the man from the fog has a nice spooky environment for him to live in. When that was done, I laid down a bit of terrain to help this build have a more natural feel to it. Now there's going to be a house sitting on top of this hill, so I built a path leading up to it, and I tiled off the rest of the surrounding landscape as well. I also built a small small bog nearby because nothing says spooky like a good old swamp. Now it's time to get to work building the house that the player will need to use if he wants to survive the night dweller. I tried making a block accurate spruce door and I think it turned out pretty well. For the walls of the house I used dark grey masonry bricks and some light tan pillars to represent stripped birch log. Now the most important part of a house is a roof so I put down some supports and put it in place. I used one by one dark grey tile pieces and expanded it layer by layer. To be honest I really like the design I got from this even though it is half a house. Turning my attention back to the landscape, I decided to add some shrubbery. This adds lots of extra detail to the area as well as providing some extra depth to the module. Next I added some torches alongside the pathway to keep the player aware from any danger. I put in a couple spruce trees on the right and on the left I added in some oak trees. Now before we can get to building the night dweller, I made sure to inhabit our little pond with a slime and this brown frog. And of course I furnished the house with a bed, a crafting table, and a furnace as well as a chest for some some iron tools. Now fortunately, this bad boy arrived just in time for the filming, so I did what any normal person would do. I took the scared Steve skin and put him in the module. Now we can start working on the man from the fog. For his torso, I used a couple of clip and hinge pieces connected together, similar to that seen in the cave dweller. When that was done, I gave him some stubby legs and long arms. Next, I moved on to the most complex part the head. This design alone took me like two days to come up with. It was really hard to get his white and red teeth as accurate as possible, and coming up with a good snot technique for the eyes was a literal pain. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Next up was his lower jaw, which again I used some very illegal looking techniques here, but you don't need to worry too much about that. When I had his jaw all put together, I connected it via the clip at the bottom of his torso, and then I put his head on. And with that, the man from the fog was complete. Just in case you're curious, here's the height difference between a minifigure and the cave dweller. With a man from the fog complete, I added him to the module, and then it was time for the cinematic shots. <laughs> 